Hello, this is a tutorial on using an audience response system formative assessment tool called Pear Deck. PearDeck.com gets you to this site. Pear Deck is actually an add-on to Google Drive, and so you can sign in with your Google login credentials. A faculty will create their Pear Deck using the Google uh, Drive app, and students can access really from any type of device, a laptop, a desktop, a smartphone, or a tablet, and they really can use any browser. If you would like to uh, know who the students are who are responding to the activities in your Pear Deck, they need to log in with Chrome. If they log in with any other browser or any other credentials, they uh, will show up as anonymous. You won't be able to identify who each student is. That may be something that you want to do um, if, you, if that's your goal. So I'm going to go into uh, the Google uh, area here. So I'm logged into my Google account. I'm going to hit the waffle, and I'm going to go into my Google Drive and launch Google Drive. Now, if I already have something uh, created, what you're going to find is the little Pear Deck uh, icon. And uh, this is the one I'm going to launch, a demo Pear Deck presentation. You can see the Pear Deck icon here. Uh, actually, um, once you're in Google Drive, if you click on the waffle, you will actually get access to uh, searching the Google App Store in order to install Pear Deck into your Google Drive account. I've already done that, so I can just come here and open up my Pear Deck. Now, this is opened up in kind of like a slide presentation mode inside Drive. So I'm going to actually open it up with the Pear Deck app itself so you can see what it's like. Now, Pear Deck is a free version, but there are also paid versions of the account as well. The paid versions have a lot more bells and whistles, but I think we can do just about anything we want to do from the free version. But those of you that may use this a whole ton, you'll have to decide. I personally think it's very expensive to get an annual subscription. It runs about $20 a month. I think that's a little crazy, but you're, you have to make that call. Basically, what we have here is this is kind of like my, my dashboard slide view here. So this shows all of the different slides that I have in here already. Just so you know, you can actually import a Google slide presentation or a PowerPoint presentation, but you are limited to only having five deck presentations with import um, in your account if you have the free version. So if I'm going to go ahead and present, all I have to do is click on Start Presenting. I have the ability to add different types of slides here, and I could keep going and add more slides, and we'll do that in a bit. As you can see, the premium version, there's some very cool features here. But unfortunately, you have to pay in order to get access to some of these draws and draggings and so forth. So you can create various types of assessment from a, a right text response. So this would be where you would ask a formative assessment question and students would type in the answer. It can be a choose the number of some choices that you would give them. Choose the answer allows you to do multiple choice as well as true and false. You can actually, the Show Students a Website is nice because you can actually pull up a, and insert things like an image or insert a URL from a video or a website and then ask a question about that. And then the non-interactive slide would just be a slide like a brand new PowerPoint or a Google slide slide that you would like to create related to just putting some text and a title and so forth. And the fact that it's non-interactive, there is no quiz question associated with that particular slide. So again, I'm going to go back to my presentation, and I'm going to hit Start Presentation. So I'm going to start the session. And there are three views generally that you can get access to. We are in the free version are only going to have access to version two and then version three, the student view. And so uh, version one, the session dashboard basically allows you to have both the student view and your teacher view. But again, that's an upgrade. 
and there's a cost involved and so forth. So that becomes a little bit more prohibitive for us to do what we want to do. So I'm going to open projector view. Now when I do that, this information is going to be given um, to me as the faculty. This key here, this is the access code for this particular Pear Deck session. So your students, you will tell them that they're going to go to PearDeck.com forward slash join. And then when they get there, they would get the Pear Deck icon and then a box to enter the code. So I am going to go ahead and do that as well. Okay, and so once I join, it will change from no students have joined to uh, one student has joined. And so we can see one student has now joined. Now on the student device, it says you're in, your instructor will begin shortly. So let's just take a look at the toolbar. Uh, down along the bottom, once I actually start firing the presentation forward with the right arrow, I will also have the left arrow up here so I can go back. If I would like to see all of the slides in my presentation, I would click here. If I want to switch views, I go over here to the side. I'm going to go back to the projector view because that's what we're in. And I'm going to launch the first slide. So the first slide, this is also what the student has seen on his or her device. So it's just kind of a welcome message talking about what this particular Pear Deck tool is. And so when the instructor is ready, going to advance to the next slide. So how will you be accessing this Pear Deck? Now at this particular point, I want to show you some of the choices down here that are kind of new. Again, switch view. This allows us to end the session, which we have to remember to do when we're done. This allows me to instantly pop a question in. So let's say I had a PowerPoint presentation I was going through and I wanted to add a quick question. This allows me to insert a slide on the spot. Right now, uh, show the student responses. They're actually blank. This is actually turned off. In other words, it's hidden. So uh, although the responses are coming in or can be coming in, as we can see here, we have one response. This is not viewable yet nor are you, as on the instructor station side, are you able to view what the particular potential answers are to this. And then this is a locking key. So once the students have responded or the time that you want to allot to this uh, exercise has passed, you can actually lock the student responses in order to keep anybody else from responding or to keep people from changing their answers. So at this point, I'm going to show the student responses. We can see this one individual that we have logging in. Uh, they have actually logged in with, um, with a smartphone. OK, so at this point, we can advance through the rest of the slides. So if I click on advance the slide, I would have the ability, I'm not going to do it here, but I would have the ability to actually play this video and so um, they're going to watch the video they're not going to see the video necessarily on their device you're going to be playing this in class and then they have the ability on their device to actually ask this particular uh, or answer this particular question and then we have kind of a short answer type after we have discussed today's material what is it that may still be fuzzy and then the again uh, locked or showing student responses uh, can um, determine whether or not you need to pause here to um, maybe do some review before you move on to the next bit of material. And so let's see if we're going to have some responses here. And so someone, uh, time value of money, let's say that was a subject that you were talking about today and they were struggling with that particular topic, so they're letting you know that before you get to the point of moving on to new material. So at this point, uh, we could end the session, and we would want to give this a name for the session. 
this would be related to whatever particular class if we wanted to save it. If not, we can just say, no thanks, just end this session. Okay, so let's talk about building one now, the whole idea of building one. So the teacher login, please choose the role that best describes you. Continue. If you have a particular subject that you want to identify, well, this is just some things that you're going to identify on the front end. You don't have to do this every time. So I'm going to create a new deck. So here's how I would add the slide. I would come over here to the side and I can choose, I could do add slide, but that works if I've already put a slide up and then I want to have the same type of slide. It'll continue to add the same slide. So I prefer to go over here to the plus sign and I prefer to pick what I want. Now the slide presentation that I showed earlier is I created a non-interactive slide and this could be hello, and I can add some text, I can put video, there was all kinds of different choices there, whatever it is that I want to do. So now I want to add the next slide. The next slide can be a text response slide where a student would write something, so that could be a short answer. They could choose a number, that would be where in class you are going to give them some choices and you pick a number one, number two, number three, whatever, or the whatever it is the answer does have uh, some type of numerical value, and they have, you can see those up and down arrows that they can make some choices from. Choose an answer, this would be where you would create a multiple choice test. So I'm just adding some and if I need a new answer choice I can add as many uh, questions as I want okay so you can see them right here this is what the students are going to see in their particular view and it's going to be a little button that they're going to just click in order to do that. I can go and add an extra slide and this time I'm going to do a write text slide. Okay and so what they will get is they will get a box as you can see here. They will get a box in order to post their response. And then I'm going to add show students a website. And I'm going to add the YouTube uh, video, the URL, and so we have it here. So you can see in my broken window here, my, my desktop for the Pear Deck, this left-hand side is my slideshow here in the order of the slides. I can actually change orders. I can delete something if it's not what I want. The student view is going to be over here. Every time I'm on a slide, the student view is going to show here. I can continue to add slides or I can wrap this up. At this point, I am done. It auto saves. You don't have to do any saving. And it actually takes your presentation and it pops it right into your Google Drive account. So you want to make sure that you give it a name because currently right now, it doesn't have a name. And so now you would look for test for Steve Jobs in that name. I have uh, kind of a toolbar over here. I can rename a file. I can use this particular uh, Pear Deck, the slideshow, for another session. A lot of different types of things that I can do. Again, these are the three different views. The student view, when you play back that video, as you can see, it's going to show up like this in your presenter or projector mode. The student will then, once it's over, have the ability to answer this question in kind of a text-based type of a version. So that's pretty much it. That's Pear Deck. Uh, again, free. You use your Google account to log in. Uh, students using other browsers, it will be anonymous. And so uh, formative assessment, 
getting some student engagement along the way um, allows you to kind of use this tool in a number of different ways. So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.